um, a word for all of you. We are recording this webinar so people who are not joining right now can still uh, see the webinar later. Um, I hope you understand that uh, recording is uh, kind of the best approach uh, right now. Uh, okay, so I'm going to share my screen. I will be handling uh, the slides. Uh, Tasbro, Piotr and Jen will help uh, unmuting people if I don't realize that someone needs to be unmuted. And also on the question and answers uh, channel that we have on Slack, Q and A. We will repeat a little bit of this information during the presentation in any case. Okay, so please use uh, the question and answer channel. So let's go to share the screen. Yes, we are on the right screen and I will also reduce my view of the, of the videos and so on. So welcome everybody. Many, many thanks for joining us on this COVID-19 virtual biohackathon. Um, dates 5th to 11th of April, although we know that uh, we have had already a lot of um, interaction via the mailing list and also via the, um, uh, the Slack. We want to start this webinar um, with a tribute to Professor James Taylor, who recently passed away. Sorry. And we want to dedicate this biohackathon to him. Our condolences to his family, his friends, and the Galaxy team as well. Now, some practical information. I hope you all know by now uh, the, the GitHub repository, but in case you, you don't, here is the link to it. We are using uh, the um, hashtag COVID underscore 19 underscore BH20. Um, so please feel free to tweet and to let everybody know about what we're doing here. Uh, via Twitter. I have seen that some of you have already done so. Thank you very much. And again, question and answers on Slack uh, via the channel QA. We decided to do it in this way, so everything will be there and you can go back uh, to those and you can also access it together with the recording of this presentation in case you didn't have the chance to join us. So communication channels. Um, we are using the wiki to gather all the information about the different topics, people participating, coordinators as well. So if you have not signed up for a topic you want to participate with, please go to the wiki and do so. Join the mailing list as well. We don't really expect much movement uh, on the mailing list during the hacking week, but still it is always a good idea to be there. Join the Slack and the corresponding channels. Um, some few topics will not be on Slack. Bevian, for instance, they have a dedicated channel on IRC. All that information is on the wiki. Uh, so please always check there. Um, yeah, for coordinators and participants, please remember to add the Slack channel you are using for a topic or alternative channel. Uh, to the wiki page so everybody knows where to find you. Of course, you can always uh, ask on the Slack and someone will point you to the right direction there. So we are starting our biohackathon with this uh, video conference, this webinar uh, meeting. But we know that we will have uh, meetings happening at the same time um, across the different teams that we have. So coordinators and people, please, Agreed on your own, um, take into account different times and the frequency that participants can co contribute to these meetings. If you see that the time zones are definitely not easy, maybe go for two sessions. Um, use the Slack. Um, there is a Slack plugin to realize which zone everybody uh, is on. So you can use the slash time put any time on your own time zone and Slack will tell you, you have all these different time zones uh, in there. Um, yeah, I, I think I'm covering everything. 
um, the other panelists uh, will let me know if anyone has put a question that we need to immediately address during this presentation. But I think I, I, I cover it all. Uh, we will have uh, some webinars during the week. So far, we have a uh, common word for languages with Michael Crusoe confirmed and Arvados. I don't know the name of uh, the presenter in there. We Peter must Anstutz. have. We'll do oh, Arvados. Thank you. Thank you. Could you please repeat it again? Peter Armstead from Curie will do the Arvados webinar. Thank you very much. So, Peter Armstead will uh, join us for the Arvados webinar. Uh, we might have a webinar about Biohack Archive. We will see if it is needed because uh, we will put all the information for the many publications um, on the channel and also on the Biohack Archive dedicated to GitHub. And there will be an Elixir intro, um, time to be confirmed, but I think uh, they are working on it. We are also having some podcasts. Many thanks to OpenScience.org uh, and Conrad Forstner uh, from Sedbemet, who is um, doing this podcast. So we already had a podcast uh, yesterday. Not sure if it is already published, uh, but I will let you know when, when it is. And we will have some more podcasts, mainly with uh, coordinators. Um, we will also have more of these webinar sessions. We want to have a midterm on Wednesday, same time, we will keep the same time, and another one on Saturday. If you want to give a daily update, please let us know by around 9 a.m., 10 a.m., um, Central European summer time, so we can arrange a webinar in case you want. Uh, to have a daily update and broadcast for everybody. The only ones that we really expect everybody to participate are the one on Wednesday and the one on um, Saturday. Biohack Archive, it has been mentioned on the mailing list. It has been mentioned as well um, on, the, um, on the channel, on the Slack, and I mentioned it here uh, a moment ago. Biohack Archive is a preprint, uh, part of the OSF uh, preprints family. We started this uh, initiative uh, last year together with people from, um, mainly from the um, Biohackathon led by DBCLS and MBDC in Japan. We also have some people from Elixir there and some people from other uh, organizations and different parts of the world. The world. Um, so the idea is that we can use this for print uh, to publish ongoing work that has started or has advanced in biohackathons, also VOCAMs, Sprints, and CoFest. Uh, we did this because we realized that publishing ongoing work, unfinished still, but with some results, preliminary results to show, is not that easy, not even in other uh, preprints. So this is the idea of our biohack, biohack archive. Uh, it is a work in progress. We are working this week on templates and guidelines, so please be patient with us. Um, but we aim to have uh, all of this ready around Thursday, so you can have a look and start working on your publications straight away. We are aiming at one publication per topic group, although we know that there are some um, topics that are splitting into two projects, two or three projects, so that is fine, okay? You can always go for a peer review or in-depth uh, research option. We might have a review about this. Uh, about this. Uh, we have not decided whether to go or not for that review, but uh, we, we do want you to contribute with this uh, preprint initiative, uh, but please, be aware that you, of course, can go for other alternatives as well. Um, there is a, a channel by Hack Archive uh, on the Slack. So if you have questions, uh, well, let us know, please. Now I will um, give the time to Jen to walk you through the code of conduct. So Jen, please go ahead. You should be able to unmute yourself. Okay, so just to um, update you on the code of conduct, um, of course, um, we're following the to-do group, so you'll see the guidelines for the code of conduct. Um, there's a link on the wiki. And, of course, we, we encourage you to be helpful, considerate, friendly, and respectful. 
Um, and also, I just want to highlight there has been some chat previous to the start of the, the biohackathon around the Code of Conduct. We've got a joint email now, and um, there's some volunteers, basically from the Elixir uh, Biohackathon, the people that took part in the Code of Conduct uh, last year, volunteered to do this again. So it's myself, Kathy, who's our industrial officer, Fortis, who's running the machine learning uh, group here, and Mateus Kuzak. They've all had experience with Code of Conduct around carpentries, et cetera. So I hope... Um, You'll feel confident to email us if there's any issues. We will uh, jointly pick that up. Um, but ho hopefully we'll have an enjoyable biohackathon and there will be no need to push this forward. But just to reassure you, there is a, a code of conduct. And if anybody uh, wants to contact us either individually or as the group, um, all the contact details are here. Thank you. Thank you so much, Jim. Um, now let's going to move to the topics, uh, and I will ask the panelists to please uh, help me unmute others, and if not, just uh, unmute yourself and let me know if I have to unmute someone. Um, please bear with us. We are still kind of learning this uh, webinar uh, technology. I, I have attended, but I didn't myself organize one before. Okay, so let's going to start with fair data. Um, I think Mark will be the one doing this one. Tasbro Piotr, can you have a look to see if you can unmute uh, Mark because I know he was not a panelist. Right, so I'll, I'll go through this fairly quickly because there's not really much to say. Um, the fair data group is going to try to make fair data out of the outputs from the other groups. Uh, so we're going to transform the data and or wrap the data that uh, that you give us or that we find ourselves, so sequences, workflows, other kinds of research objects, into some fair structure. Uh, the suggestion was that we try the relatively new uh, our research object crates, which um, is a, a, a formulaic way of attaching metadata uh, to its data in a folder structure. Um, I'm going to also, I was talking with Oscar Corso last night, and I'm going to also try to extend the RO crate specification so that it uses the linked data platform container system so that it's not relying on files and folders, but the entire thing is virtual. And he thought that was a really good idea, so I'm going to try to do that. Um, and uh, the other <clears throat> aim, is to collect uh, vocabulary terms that are missing from existing vocabularies and talk to the owners of those ontologies or vocabularies and, and get those registered. Um, I gather that's also something the ontology group is going to do. So we'll, we'll probably, um, anything that we find, we'll pass on to them. Uh, so to participate, we'd like you to, uh, of course, no linked data on ontologies. Uh, you can code in any language you wish. Um, and what we'd like at the end is for the output of this hackathon to be fair. So I'm done. Thanks a lot, Mark. So let's going to move to ontology. Um, we don't have uh, much information here, but uh, if any of the people on the ontology group want to jump in and just verbally describe what they are going to do. I know you have been working a lot. Bob or Nuria, we, we have a question in chat about what is fair data. And I think maybe we can take that to the QA uh, on Slack. Just yes, redirecting people please. to ask questions in the QA channel. OK, I'll do that. Thank you so much. Um, Michael to, rem to remind people, we have the QA channel on Slack, so everything uh, will remain there for everybody to have a look. Yeah, and you just see a blank page. We came up uh, with four ideas, which uh, basically fit uh, uh, to what was Mark already mentioning. We, uh, to some extent, we will uh, work on new standards to develop uh, ontologies for epidemiologic and monitoring ontologies. Um, uh, uh, taking up uh, indicators from the WHO, 
Um, one idea is to uh, uh, merge with the aims of phenopackets, to extend the phenopackets, uh, to include uh, specific genomic sequence assays. Uh, this might be useful in case for COVID-19 is an um, anti uh, body assay as it is available for MERS and uh, SARS-1 already. Um, this will mix, of course, with uh, um, groups dealing with that. I think it's a knowledge graph group and um, group dealing with genomic assays. Uh, one idea is to extend the detection assay ontologies from OBO uh, to cover the rele relevant uh, biomedical uh, um, ontology stuff. Um, this overlaps, of course, with the FAIR data group. Likewise, it's interesting then to uh, take the phenol packets and investigate if we could turn them in FAIR digital optics, if this is uh, in the focus of Mark, I don't know yet. And uh, uh, of course, as a benchmark, there is already available data where we can test our uh, new <coughs> ontological data mining. This is a, a, a CORD19 data set provided by the Kegel context. I think this will overlap with the aims of the machine learning group. Um, that's basically it, what I see uh, at the latest points from the chat. If Nuria is here, she can, of course, better complete than me. Thanks. Perfect. Thank you very much to Klaus and the Ontology Group. Let's going to move now uh, to the pandenome. I saw it was the next one. Anyone from the pandenome that can do uh, a presentation right now, please? Go ahead, Simon. Please. Later. Uh, can you hear me? Sorry. Yeah. Oh, I, yes, Simon, you are. Okay, on. I I can try to step in. So I think Eric Garrison is the official coordinator of this topic. Do you but want me to refresh uh, the the page in case you have put something there, or no, um, okay, perfect? Okay. I perfect. only edited the next slide actually. Perfect. No because problem. I thought Eric would do this one, but I can try to step in here. So I mean. The aim is to build a pan genome, but not only the typical pan genome, you know, but the graphical pan genome. So we will make use of um, um, genome variation graphs to build such a pan genome. And one thing we also want to do is we want to try to sort such a pan genome in a way that we can actually build uh, blocks. And this is later important for visualization. Yeah, and I think it would be great that we would have pipelines to actually build such pensionums. So we would have to work together with people from workflow, for example. I'm sorry, I can't tell you much more here. I'm not so deep. It's okay. We have uh, the wiki in any case, so people can go to the wiki or people can go to the Slack channel as well. Thank you very much. And I think uh, you will stay on for the next one, right? For the Pandinome exactly. browser? Perfect. Yeah. Lena, Lena, wait a second. And, uh, I think Ben raised the hand. Okay, we're moving on. Okay, yeah. let's going to move to the Pandinome browser. Sorry about that. So please go ahead with the Pandinome browser. So this topic will be coordinated by me and Josiah Seaman, who's currently in the US time zone. So he's not available now, but he will be later. And our aim is to build an interactive visualization of graphical pangenomes of COVID-19 data. So what we want to have is we want to be able to zoom from the nucleotide level to the whole genome level. And we want to enrich the visualization with annotation and metadata. And ideally, we also can um, bring in some haplotype information generated by haplot blockers so that we can squeeze the visualization more together on the x axis. Also, we want to integrate Sparkle resources and we want to bring the whole thing, or we want to ship the whole thing in a Docker container so that everybody can use it. <coughs> uh, people would need JavaScript, React, Mobix, State Tree, or Python or C to work with us. Also, it would be a great plus if they already have experience in the visualization of sequencing or graphical or other crunch pan genome data. In the end, we will have an interactive pan genome visualization tool for COVID-19 sequence data that includes annotation and metadata. Uh, we have great potential to work together with the pan genome um, people, with the workflow people, so that we can 
put this all into a workflow it, that in the end we'll just see the visualization of the just built graph. Also, we uh, can work with the knowledge graph people and maybe also with the phylogeny people so that we can also put or visualize in phylogeny data. Yeah, that's it. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. We're moving to workflows now. Uh, Michael, I think uh, that will be you, maybe? Uh, hello, uh, this is Michael Hoyer from uh, UC Berkeley. Can everyone hear me? Yes. All right, great. Um, so the uh, workflows topic group, um, we started by cataloging uh, COVID-19 related workflows uh, on the wiki page. And that effort is now going to continue with the workflow hub topic group, uh, which I believe is the next slide. Uh, then as part of the NF core effort, uh, we're going to focus this week on the NF core uh, viral recon workflow, which is based on aluminum sequencing data. Uh, we also hope to collaborate in NF core with the Ar Arctic team uh, who have implemented a, a workflow for nanopore data in NextFlow. Uh, and then other folks in the workflows topic group will be working on uh, the Galaxy COVID-19 workflow. Uh, and we're looking to share between workflows written in Galaxy, NextFlow, and common workflow language, uh, CWL. Uh, and Michael Caruso is the uh, co-coordinator for this group. I don't know if you wanted to add anything, Michael. Yeah, I'd say it's a general goal to uplift the workflows of researchers um, from the, from the preprints, from outside of our group, from within our group and just kind of Im improve them, polish them, make them more documented and, and useful to others, and they'll feed into the FAIR Data Initiative. That Thank sounds great. <laughs> and then, of course, um, we're, we're hoping that some of these workflows will uh, end up integrating uh, downstream into the Pan Genome and Pan Genome Browser groups. Great. Nice. Thank you. So let's go and move to the workflow hub. Not sure who is presenting this one. Uh, so the workflow hub um, effort is, so you just heard Michael presenting about workflows. This is a registry for workflows. So we have set, stood up the workflow hub.eu, which is the uh, workflow hub being developed for the European Open Science Cloud Life Project. And uh, here we're fast tracking that work to establish a COVID uh, workflow. This is uh, so, so we're establishing this workflow uh, registry called the Workflow Hub. Um, we are particularly focusing around uh, Galaxy workflows, Nextflow workflows, and arbitrary scripts. So uh, Python scripts, Bash scripts, that sort of thing. Um, it's to set up a pre-production instance because we weren't scheduled to actually rele the, release this to beta until July, but we fast-tracked it for this initiative. And uh, we also have a bunch of uh, tasks around markup of the workflows using the research object crate, which I expect Michael may have mentioned or earlier, bioschemas for marking up the workflows. And we have a bioschemas profile that we also want uh, folks to contribute to. Um, really, we need people who are, as it says, Ruby on, preferably Ruby on Rails developers, but we're happy to take anybody, people who have Python, people who know JSON, um, and quite a lot of documentation writing as well, because we'll be writing guides on how to upload uh, scripts and how to register workflows that are held in GitLab, GitHub. GitHub and other uh, repositories. So uh, Workflow Hub is both a registry for workflows held in their native repositories and a repository for workflows that are orphans, in particular, um, that means scripts. We also have an additional task, which is uh, for uploading scripts to do a second wave over them in order to be able to improve the metadata. So I, I hope that was um, helpful. Perfect. Indeed. Thank you. Thank you so much. We have a 9 a.m. muster. Uh, so that's a 9 a.m. 9 uh, 
BST, so 10 a.m. CEST muster on uh, Monday, and I will uh, put the Zoom uh, call into our um, page on the COVID uh, site, and that's when we'll be mustering um, people to join us and to allocate tasks. Great. Thank you so much. So people willing to join these, they already know there will be a meeting tomorrow at uh, 9 a.m. Um, BST. Okay, so let's going to move to the next slide. Uh, Martin Learning, uh, 40s, maybe you are for this one? No, I, I think someone else was doing this one. Don't... Philip Davis raised his hand. Yes, can you hear me? Yes, please go ahead. Hi, everyone. Um, I'm uh, co-hosting this uh, group with uh, Fotis Samopoulos. Um, we are in the early stages of kind of brainstorming what projects we're going to take on under this. Uh, we've got some ideas about clustering methods, uh, basically some unsupervised learning methods where maybe we can find relationships in the data available so far uh, that haven't been elucidated. Uh, a lot of this is going to be really dependent on what data sets we can find and uh, what's well annotated. Um, but there's also talks about maybe looking at uh, graphical data that is available. Some of that's already, you know, there's been some uh, examples of that done, I think, already of um, doing uh, you know, diagnosis from CT scans, et cetera. Um, uh, general programming skills are going to be needed for this. People with experience in machine learning. Um, uh, and, you know, biological sequence analysis uh, and imaging, obviously, might be useful if you have a background in that. Um, I'm really excited, personally, to uh, interact with people maybe who have just computer science, machine learning backgrounds, but don't have a lot of experience specifically in genomics, because uh, it'll be fun to uh, bridge the gap there. Um, so potential outcomes, uh, uh, clusters that have some kind of underlying biological meaning, maybe. Um, we all, I also have some supervised learning ideas that I'm going to talk about with the group this afternoon. We have another meeting, a follow-up meeting to kind of flesh out the plan here. So uh, we might have um, all sorts of outputs. I don't know. You can imagine some of these may be informing uh, things like the pan-genome uh, effort. If we find uh, genomic features, for instance, that are predictive of certain phenotypes, etc., uh, yeah, and obviously for the graphical data, maybe classifiers supporting diagnosis. Um, some of the obvious collaborators would be the biostats group. Uh, I think text mining and analysis might have some overlap, uh, and phylogeny, uh, like I just mentioned, pangenomes as well. So we're in the early stages of planning here. <laughs> Perfect, Philip. Thank you so much. It's going to move to knowledge graph. I think. Uh, Alex Garcia was going to present. Is Alex on the call? Yep. Hi. Please go ahead. Me? Thank you. Okay. Yes. Hi. Hi, everyone. So um, this is the uh, knowledge graph uh, group, uh, and under this group, there are several projects. Um, the aim of uh, our group is just to use um, label property graph technology to support the uh, integration of different data resources uh, for COVID nineteen. Um, we are looking for people who have uh, skills in Python, Java, JavaScript, uh, who know about RDF um, and who uh, know about uh, the Cypher query language, which is the Neo4j query language. Um, we also um, need people who, uh, who, who are willing to participate in building web interfaces that are not meant for researchers, but are mostly meant for clinicians. Um, the potential outcome uh, of this group, as we have uh, been discussing it, could be knowledge graphs with data sets and end user apps consuming this kind of information. Um, the specific project in which I am involved uh, is trying to reuse uh, an existing annotated data set of literature that is related to COVID-19. And what we are going to do is that we're going to be um, building a, a graphic user interface so that people can Query this data set using the PICO paradigm. PICO stands for Population Intervention um, Comparison and Outcome. And this is, um, this is a way that clinicians frame their queries so that they can go straight into the actual issues they are interested in from the literature without having to 
um, do a lot of uh, reading uh, in of the, of the literature. So we're just going to be building basically a fasted browser that will work against um, the uh, ontologies that have been used to annotate the data set of um, COVID-19 related uh, literature. That's uh, our aim. Um, that's, that's all I have. Thank you. Thank you very much, Alex. So let's go to move uh, to the next topic. Text mining and analysis. So, um, yeah, we are organizing a text mining group and uh, uh, so uh, our goal is to build a biomedical text mining application to aid in design experiments. And actually, um, I myself was organizing uh, annotation collection uh, projects around uh, pub annotation. So it is uh, now uh, we are collecting annotations produced by uh, various groups, actually, and we are integrating uh, those annotations in uh, pub annotation. And uh, one of our goal is um, releasing all the integrated annotation data set uh, in the end of this uh, hackathon. And um, we hope um, those um, data set will be useful for a um, knowledge-based building group or a machine learning group. Yeah, I can imagine that uh, some of uh, the collections that you will build uh, could be consumed by the knowledge graphs uh, groups. Good. Thank you, Jin Dong. Thank you. Let's going to move now to Wikidata. I think it is uh, Andra. Yes, Martin. I mean. Perfect. Go ahead, please. Thank you. Yeah, I'm. Uh, we're, we're going to work on Wikidata. And when I say Wikidata, I have three concepts of the name. There is Wikidata as the public knowledge graph of Wikipedia. There is Wikidata as an infrastructure to share data on, and there is a community aspect of Wikidata with a lot of sub communities. The aims of the uh, of the, this week is to add, update, synchronize data with Wikidata, if that is legally allowed, meaning uh, Wikidata only allows public data, and if not, if we can uh, use the underlying infrastructure upon which Wikidata thrives, which is Wikibase, uh, and we're going to reuse, trying to reuse data on or from Wikidata on other Wiki projects, write Sparkle queries, and trying to extract schemas from a wiki data, meaning that there is already a lot of data on Wikidata add in parallel by projects, and but not everybody uses the same property space. So we're trying to see how how, how is the COVID related data shared across Wikidata, and we're going to try to run federated Sparkle queries. Big data and other variants. Uh, well, skills that are needed is editing data Wikipedia, programming, GUI development, writing Sparkle, writing shape expressions, using tools like OpenRefine and Quick Statements. Uh, and we hope to uh, have extended coverage of COVID-19, SARS-CoV virus knowledge on Wikidata and related media wiki platforms, that is uh, reusing, for example, Wikipedia, and also reuse of fair data in Wikidata, slash Wikibase, and vice versa. The topics that uh, are worth, uh, we can work with is translation. There is a multilingual aspect into Wikidata that can be leveraged to extract uh, uh, translation. Uh, love to work with the fair group. And there is, a, there is a project going on, which is the Wiki Project COVID-19, where the Wikidata community is also trying uh, tackling the same, the same problems. We have set up a documentation page in Etherpad where we're going to try to uh, grab the, the progress. Perfect, that thank you. Did you want to, to add anything else, sorry? No, that was it for me. Um, Good, thank you, Andra. And yes, the, the documentation is ongoing for the Wikidata group in this uh, Etherpad. So if you are interested, you can see there as well and in the wiki. Okay, good. Let's going to move uh, to the next one. By statistics, I think this one is Totis Posomopoulos. Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> hi, everyone. Um, I am uh, co-coordinating this with uh, uh, Yane uh, Solampa, if I pronounce this correctly. 
Um, the idea, uh, so this has been a lot of discussion over the past week, uh, mostly through the, chat, the Slack channel about uh, what games might be. Uh, the main concept is to focus on a, um, on a model um, that could be either a function or a dynamical model um, with the purpose of um, identifying, first of all, testing it and, um, against the existing data points that we have uh, across time, across different uh, geographical splits and so forth, um, and also try to test various scenarios um, of policies that have been applied, um, test against different strains, mutations, or phylogenetic treatment that might come across, and um, ideally move forward with that and uh, try to find some correlations between um, the parameters from different cases of the same model um, to um, other external aspects, such as the NML data, and basically the assumptions that we might, um, we might get uh, from, from other um, sources, such as literature. And there's a lot of literature coming in about this particular point now. Um, as you can sort of understand, the main skills uh, required is basically statistics and programming. Uh, but we definitely require a lot of um, ideas and um, understanding of uh, epidemiology and biology um, so that we can assess the literature and how to the assumptions that are available there. Um, a bit of data wrangling, uh, because there are a lot of data that is going to be collected from other topics as well, but it's to be sort of informative distraction so it can be usable. Um, and uh, as potential outcomes, uh, talking about um, this week-long uh, biohackathon, the first one is basically a working model or, or a set of working models that can be reused for other purposes and also establish a repository of uh, parameters and models that have been used uh, across with the particular scenarios so that other people can sort of build on them. Um, there are a lot of connections with other existing topics. Uh, the FAIR data is um, one of the first ones that I can come up with. Uh, machine learning is a, also an interesting connection because a lot of those points that I've raised have a clear connection with uh, machine learning approaches. Uh, phylogenetics and workflows, which I unfortunately forgot to add here, is also another point of, of connection uh, that I can think of. In any case, we already have planned a first call um, right after this, um, this event. Uh, I've added the registration uh, link here. It's also on the, um, on the Biostats channel. And that's all for me. Thank you very much, Potis. So um, if you are interested in this group, please be aware that will be a call right after this webinar. Mm -hmm. Annotation on structures. This uh, Slack channel was created recently. Um, hello. Oh, okay. Perfect. Go ahead. Thank you. <laughs> uh, yeah. Hello, everyone. Um, my name is uh, Gerardo Toriello. Um, I'm in Basel, Switzerland. I, I started this topic on annotations on structures. Um, myself, I'm heading the, the development team for, for Swiss model, which does predictions of, uh, of protein structures. Um, and the, the, the purpose of, of this topic, or the, uh, well, the, the context for it, um, first is uh, that uh, we already have a resource which collects and visualizes experimental and predicted structures for as many proteins as possible uh, for the for the coronavirus and we we know from from our many users that uh, uh, people like to use this uh, structural uh, view um, to map uh, useful annotations on them to see um, results of experimental studies, uh, interesting mutations, etc., in the context of the um, three-dimensional representation. And within this topic, we want to basically collect uh, whatever can be useful um, to map on 3D structures um, to be able to display them, um, uh, to be able to display them on, on, this, on the structures. Um, so this will mainly be kind of a loosely connected effort to take whatever uh, useful data that can be mapped um, and would do the mapping and uh, how to how to visualize it, how to color it. That will require um, mainly scripting skills um, to process the data. Um, preferably also any bioinformatics skills is useful to generate new data to uh, process the data in a way that uh, that makes it more useful for people that want to. To do something with it. Um, essentially, what it means is that you would take whatever knowledge has been generated, um, you map it onto the sequence space of, um, of uniprot protein sequences, 
Um, you decide for each of the annotations how this should be colored. You uh, define a little text that, go, uh, that goes with it. Um, and if this is scripted, it can always use the latest data, which is great. Um, and, and this is basically the contributions that we would, uh, we would love to get within, within this topic. Um, since this is kind of an integration of data effort, uh, there's plenty of potential collaborations we can, uh, we can, I can imagine fetching data produced by the Pangenome project, by the Knowledge Graph project, uh, the virtual screening effort, phylogeny, machine learning. Um, all of those could be uh, processed in a way that can be visualized uh, and, and structured. Um, yeah, we have a Slack channel uh, on, on that. There's a GitHub repository. There's some uh, ideas of what annotations could be mapped. And I hope to get uh, interesting feedback from participants uh, during this hackathon. Great, thank you very much. I know there are some other people from Unicode uh, in the Biohackathon. Not sure if anyone from PDB, because I can imagine this would be uh, of interest for them as well. Thank you so much. Let's going to move uh, to translation. I will do this one um, on behalf of uh, Jasunori Yamamoto, who is uh, the coordinator for this one, but he could not join us today. So I will do it on his behalf and uh, well for the group. So the idea is to translate material from English to other languages, although uh, we are considering as well a uh, translation from uh, any pair of languages. And the idea here is to lower the language uh, barrier for other countries or for um, general population that not necessarily speak uh, other than their native language. The skills that we need, well, it's just uh, being able to write, being able to speak and learn at least two languages. Um, although, now that I think about it, uh, even if you learned, even if you know only one language and you can help for translations to that language to do a little bit of editing uh, style and so on, that would be helpful as well. Uh, we have been looking into DeepL, Google Translate, uh, Crowdin, and Transifex. Some of the potential out outcomes that we have seen so far are related to Wikidata and blogs and other topics we could collaborate with. Uh, Wikidata, which is not mentioned here, but should be. I will fix that on the slides uh, later on today uh, because we want to translate some material from Wikidata. And I can imagine that with home training, home learning, we can interact as well because uh, we have seen that um, in some uh, low-income and developed uh, or developing countries, there is a big need uh, of uh, material for the general population about how to act uh, for this pandemic. This is what I wanted to share with you about translation today. So we can move uh, to the next slide. Just, well, so, and now, six people have signed up to web development. Yeah, yeah. So six people have signed up team so you know more people should sign up and we'll, we'll kick off coordination soon okay perfect and uh, for uh, the groups that have mentioned that you want to produce uh, user end uh, tools uh, please have a look to the web development wiki so you can find more information there about who could uh, join your group to contribute with some web development now let's go in to move to the Serratus uh, topic project um, who is for Sabatus? So uh, I have joined uh, the group, Sabatus group, and uh, I asked them to, uh, who is presenting the slides, but I think um, the lead Artem is uh, in Canada and it's, it's too early for him. Yeah. So I think I can briefly give uh, uh, the summary of the topic. So, so this group is uh, aiming to uh, search the the coronavirus sequence from the older sequence with archive or new seq data. So um, we are developing the, the system to um, search uh, coronavirus sequences uh, from the massive NGS data, uh, which very um, comprehensively and uh, also effectively using the cloud infrastructure. So um, every, everyone is welcome to join if you have any, uh, if you have interest and if you have skills like uh, uh, using the NGS data, also um, the sequencing search and also the cloud infrastructure skills. 
I think that's it. Thank you, Tasro. Let's going to move uh, to the next one. Uh, Michael, maybe you are for this one, packaging using Debian? Yeah, uh, there's a lot of software packaging communities and that's great. And in Debian, we uh, definitely want to, again, uplift the good scientific software out there um, and uh, help out, but not get in the way. So we're interested in all COVID-19 relevant software. Maybe we don't put every script in Debian, but maybe there's a dependency there. Um, and so we're here to help folks out. So uh, we've got lots of folks who are really great in software packaging. They just need to know what to package. So come on by, tell us about that. Um, if you want to learn about software packaging, we're happy to teach. And we're actually having our meeting. I think it's going on right now, but uh, hopefully it'll, it'll continue on after this meeting is done as well. Okay, good, great. Okay. Nice to see. And um, just a reminder, this group will be using an IRC rather than a Slack channel, but all the information is on the wiki. Let's go to the next slide. Gene expression. Um, hey everyone. Mariana? Yeah, yes. go ahead. Nice to meet you all. Um, so, I mean, most of us in this gene expression channel are more into the analysis of data. So we wanted to maybe perform RNA-seq all kinds of RNA-seq analysis on published data sets. So we have one first data set that just came out on the 25th uh, of uh, cells infected with uh, SARS-CoV-2. And then we wanted to go into this data and analyze it in many pipelines that uh, many people are helping. So uh, we need uh, bioinformatics in general, NGS analysis, biostatistics, and also biological people that uh, will look into the data and find meaningful information. And uh, the potential outcomes that we want is, well, first, in a biological way, we wanted to perform a global RNA-seq analysis um, for, these, uh, for this data set in order to search for new candidate genes. I mean, we all know about ACE and uh, there, there is one other uh, receptor for the virus that is known, but uh, not much else is known so far. And I think that we wanted to also move on to finding other genes and proteins that are that are interesting and uh, also we want to actually methodologically we want to create a packaged and reproducible pipeline on dockers to help scientists that will have their sequencing data and uh, we'll be able to run this pipeline very fast and uh, also help them analyze and compare to our results and uh, well there are Maybe other topics that we can collaborate, uh, maybe biostatistics, serratus, fair data, workflows, but uh, if any of you want to help, uh, we're all for it. Thank you, Mariana. Okay. Um, I think we can move to the next topic. Although, yes, clinical and translational medicine data. I don't remember who proposed this one. So please help me out. Any raised hand? Tenkata? Yeah, yes, Michelle. Hello, can you hear me? Yes, please yes. go ahead. Uh, yes. Uh, hello, Laila. Hi, this, this is Venkata. Uh, so we want, uh, we want to uh, uh, set up a you know to uh, infrastructure to handle the clinical data associated with the. Or the sequencing data or the expression data so we we, we thought of uh, also you know establishing a link to the clinical data to the molecular data and verified the data maybe collaborating with uh, uh, you know the fair data uh, colleagues uh, uh, mark wilkinson etc and also the, then like what we need like we we were thinking of setting up the deploy the red cap instance Okay, so we need somebody, uh, uh, people having experience with the red cap, and also knowledge of the fair and the ontologies and terminologies, and also like we will align with the ontology group as well. Uh, and the other thing, and what we want to come up as outcome to set up a red cap instance populated with the uh, COVID uh, uh, Israel uh, uh, case report form. This is the World Health Organization. Uh, the, um, the coordinating the all the data collection instruments and all the, the case report forms they designed the CRF so that you know we could we can pull the data easily uh, for, 
from different clinical studies. So we will uh, we are planning to uh, uh, code the this red cap instance with this uh, Isarac uh, uh, COVID CRF, and then we want to uh, align with. I think this slide is not uh, uh, up to date. Um, uh, then I mentioned here uh, in the online version to collaborate with the fair data and the ontology group and also the C, uh, gene expert molecular data gene expression one and the sequencing one as well uh, yeah i think that's it only i think that, i mean like uh, here the uh, i don't know like we will set up this one i'm not sure how much clinical data will come uh, and uh, in for us uh, to make it available hopefully some clinical data will uh, will come or people can use this uh, red cap instance to to run their clinical study to collect the data so maybe if any comments from the community would be helpful either here or on the slack channel i think we had some people coming from wet labs not sure if they could uh, contribute uh, to this topic but in general if you think uh, wet lab people could contribute to your topic please let them know thank you <laughs> Let's going to move uh, to the next one as uh, home learning. I think it was uh, Riotta presenting this topic. Yes, and um, he's now able to talk. Riotta, yeah, Riotta, you can talk now. I heard yes. something. Yes, I, I okay. heard okay. something. Riotta, are you there? Perfect, Riotta, we can hear yes. you now. Go ahead. I'm, I'm Riotta from, from Thailand. Uh, it's not refreshed, but um, yes, the aim is to create home learning materials for bioinformatics beginners, like the students. And the background is that uh, many people are uh, right now, they cannot go out and uh, they have time to learn about virus genome at home. So uh, we are going to uh, create some simple learning materials using uh, Google uh, Quora as a platform uh, because of the it's it's easier setup. And we need people uh, for creating tutorials, uh, maybe for advertising their own tools using um, coronavirus uh, genome. And also for uh, the people for testing tutorials, beginners are welcome. And and all the uh, 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 tutorials will be linked from the uh, Biohackathon Wiki at the end. Yeah, thank you. Great, thank you. Thank you very much. Home learning. So this one was the last one, and now we are going to move to public sequence resource. Thomas, I think it is you. Thomas Liner, or maybe yes, fine. Oh yeah, everybody. Yeah. Um, I think this is the last slide of the project. The reason for that is that this is more like a top level project. It's more a milestone, really. What I mean by that is that we want to try to combine multiple sub projects to get a, a bigger thing right and the idea is um, we call it public sequence resource so you can upload a sequence this is stored analyzed processed in the end um, you can uh, go in and look at it at the, at the home page and it could be searchable etc so obviously there are multiple projects that we heard about that contribute to that we talked about workflows that's going to be necessary um, the variation graph and pan genome um, guys are involved we want to integrate data that's a big part of the data upload the metadata etc and so really this is a, a project that touches many of the sub projects and like we heard actually we could have a lot of additional collaborations Ontologies, fair data, wiki data, the knowledge graphs. It could in, potentially touch pretty much everybody. Obviously, that's not going to be possible in five days. But what we try to do is connect the dots in between at least some sub projects. And we have, of course, a GitHub page where you can read a lot more about the plan that we have. And we have a Slack channel as well. Perfect. Uh, 
Thank you, Thomas. And yes, indeed, I think that was uh, the last uh, slide about projects. There were people that uh, wanted to present uh, some projects uh, that were not in the wiki. I asked them to add the slides if possible. Don't know if uh, they did it. So maybe we will be surprised, but uh, some more projects. Salvador, following. Salvador, has, Salvador has raised his hand. Okay. Salva. Yes. Yes. Okay. So I have a, a very little comment about the, the the repository for sequences. I will advocate to use existing resources like uh, NCBI, uh, the, the, the sequence archive or the the ENA, the Penetrated Archive, as a main repository for sequences, and later on extract to be an API the data that is needed, but not to create or to reinvent the wheel. Just saying, well, let's create this, uh, this uh, repository for sequence. Because we need to think in the sustainability. When the, the biohackathon finish, we need the, those sequences to be properly annotated and all the things that we have been describing here, but be available for the whole community. And that will be important to, re to use what we already have. I don't know if that is implied here, but I, don't, I, I didn't see it very clear. Um, I think uh, lots of biohackathoners are very committed to that data should go in the existing public repositories. I, I um, so that wasn't explicit here, but I, I've not heard anything to contradict that. In fact, lots of comments about that's very important to everybody. Uh, I mean, if that is clear, I'm super happy. Just to, to, to I wanted to, to, to ensure that because we are seeing many things going on with sequences that are not deposited in public repositories. There are problems and so on and so forth. Thank yep. you so much. Um, um, Michael, I, I think you have uh, control of my screen. Yeah. Yes, make it especially uh, to uh, Thomas uh, uh, for the public sequences. Do do you envision to get uh, get some clinical data as well associated with this uh, sequencing sequencing data? Uh, I mean, these are the viral sequences, but these are the human. Uh, SARS COV2 sequences. Is there any phenotypic information is envisioned to come together with this uh, sequencing information? Or the uh, serology or RT PCR? You know, this is the kind of right now uh, 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 people are looking uh, along with the sequencing can, data. Can you hear me? Yes, I can. Okay. Um, well, Thomas, we lost you. I can hear Thomas. Okay. So really, we have to discuss this. Um, it's not like we have the the plan all um, sorted at this point. <laughs> That's my yeah, answer. Yeah. That, okay. that might I mean, the re yeah. The uh, reason I'm saying like good. the one, yeah. Thomas, the, the 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 thing we are trying to do, like you know, to provide a, a way to collect the clinical data, you know, or and also to take advantage of the ontology group and the fair data to make this data fair and standardized. I mean, if you look at the uh, ISREC, uh, World Health Organization, CRF, maybe one thing we could, uh, we, could, uh, we, could ontolo we could put ontologies on the top of that CRF so that, you know, we will have, if anybody yeah. using this ISREC, uh, uh, the, uh, the CRF can be uh, by default interoperable, the data. Kind of, you know, we could do that. We could put. That I, I thought when I saw your slide as well that there is overlap. Um, yeah, in a way. yeah, yeah, yeah. So, but but let's discuss this in slide. Yeah, let's say a line. Yeah, sure. Okay. Sure. So it's yeah. great Good. that you have identified new overlaps. That's a, a good outcome of these presentations, I would say. And um, please remember also uh, to add these questions to the question and answer channels, so people coming later can also have access to it and and in any case you you need to go back to it you will be able to do so as well um okay so i think we can move to the next slide let me see yes available resources uh so we have some available resources uh, that have been kindly offered uh by different uh, participants we have um a page 
for it on, on, on the GitHub repository, so you can see there. If you can also provide any other resource that you don't see listed here, or if you want to provide, for instance, a webinar on um, how to make the most out of these resources, I know that uh, when running things on the cloud, uh, you should, since the beginning, kind of uh, think that you will go cloud at some point. So if you want to provide a webinar on these available resources, uh, it would be nice as well. Um, we have some listed in there, so just uh, go to the GitHub repository, have a look. And if you have anyone at, um, any other resources to add there, please feel free to do so as well. As I mentioned at the beginning of the presentation, we already have uh, an Arvados, um webinar coming soon and uh, yeah we will see how many others uh, we, we get in there okay i think we can move uh, to the other uh, to the next uh, page unless anyone from arvados uh, galaxy or rs studio want to say anything about their resources anyone from galaxy arvados jupyter notebooks raising hands Peter Amstutz. Yep. Hello. Um, yep. So yeah, uh, curious setup as you mentioned the Arvados instance. Um, just you know, really quick summary. Like you can use it for hosting data, sharing data, um, running workflows. <clears throat> I think it'll be used heavily by the workflows group. Um, it you know you can also there's an API. So if you're building a web application, it may be useful uh, to sort of as a sort of backend. Um, if you anybody can log in with a Google account, but you will be <clears throat> inactive when you initially log in. So um, you need to ping me on Slack, uh, Peter Amstutz. Uh, I'll be on the Tech Help Desk channel, and I will uh, activate your account. So that's I think the main thing everyone needs to know. Uh, yeah, thank you very much. Great, thank you. We will learn more about this with the webinar as well. Anyone else offering resources that uh, want to say a couple of words now? I will take that as a no. So let's go into Jen move. Jennifer, um, raise your hand. Okay, Jen, you're here. Okay, perfect. Yes, um, please go ahead. Um, yes. The resource is available. Um, Elixir nodes uh, compute is available. I think that was added onto the wiki. I will check, but um, I know some folks have been involved in doing that. Uh, I'll add some links as well. We have. I know Finland have been offering if you want to use their compute, and we'll uh, give you access to that. Um, I think. Um, yeah, I'll. I'll put some contact details if anybody wants to be involved in that. Also, we have an Elixir uh, page around COVID, around the resources that are available. Of course, the EBI resource, they've got their portal that probably be very useful as well. So I'll put some links in. And if anybody's got any questions, please uh, don't hesitate to contact me on Slack. Good. Thank you, Jen. Thanks. Uh, we know um, that uh, Jenny, a lot of... Yeah, yes. uh, Layla, Layla. Jenny also, like I mentioned to Jonathan, also uh, Elixir Luxembourg node also uh, uh, mm -hmm. offering some resources, computing, storage, uh, both CPUs and GPUs. Uh, some, uh, yeah, some activities already running from the, you know, some calculations from technical university mention and etc. Uh, if anybody needs some resources, please let us know. Great, thank you. Uh, so we will double check uh, to see whether we have all this information on the wiki. If not, we will be updating the wiki about computing resources as well. Um, I know that- uh, Victoria, raise your hand. Yes. Yes, hello. Yes, yes. go ahead, Victoria. Victoria. Go ahead. Yeah. It's also, I put in the link for the uh, Elixir France that have also resources to share. Uh, if you need some uh, virtual machines and also con uh, and also a link with um, 
Dock and containers, please don't hesitate to ask us. I put the link to the in, in, in the chat. And yes, also Elixir fans will be happy to, to, to share resources for this biohackathon. Thank you. Please add it to this compute resources uh, page on the repository as well, so people can get all the information about the repositories there, Victoria. Thank you. Um, so um, I know that uh, a lot of people in Europe know about Elixir, um, a lot of people outside Europe as well, uh, but uh, in case, you, you're wondering uh, about more information regarding Elixir, we might have a webinar about Elixir as well. Okay, so let's going to move uh, to the other slide, other ways to contribute. There are some COVID-19 community projects. Um, I know that there is a biohackathon running by MIT right now. Uh, it is started on Friday and it is uh, closing today. Uh, there are some other initiatives that are running on. I know that on Slack, one or two more events were mentioned. I was hoping that they would add the information here. Uh, but maybe we can create uh, a page on our GitHub repository where people can add uh, events that they are organizing around uh, COVID um, on, on the following weeks or months. And uh, maybe we can have the life sciences in general as well. Um, for that in particular, we have the Biohackathon Europe 2020. Jen, I don't know if you want to add something about the Biohackathon in November. Just to highlight that our project submission is still open to the 30th of April. So, I mean, uh, feasibly, if it you want to continue something that comes out of this biohackathon, the virtual one, you could continue it um, at the biohackathon in Europe. So that's something maybe you should consider and think about. And the closing date, as I highlighted, is 30th of April, and we do fund two participants per project potentially as well. So there is the website. You can have a look about further details and ping me if you want any update on Slack. Thank you. Thank you, Jennifer. So, uh, yes, we have uh, some other opportunities to keep collaborating uh, in COVID-related uh, subjects, but also life sciences in general. And uh, we will create a page uh, to gather that information there as well. Uh, okay, we actually have some more uh, events here. This is great at the Bioinformatics Community Conference 2020. Anyone who wants to talk about this one? Uh, hello, this is Michael. Um, yeah, I just wanted to point out in particular the uh, virtual collaboration fest uh, that will be following uh, the conference itself. Uh, it's a self-directed event, very similar to this one, and uh, everyone is welcome to join uh, that event as well. Okay, thank you very much. Um, the MVDC DBCLS Biohackathon 2020, uh, Taz Shiaki, anyone who can talk about this one? Uh, yes, um, I'm going to introduce the, the Biohackathon. Uh, Japan. Uh, so this year we we're gonna have hopefully we're gonna have the series by hackathon in Japan, uh, which is held in Hiroshima. Uh, the date is on September six to twelfth. But uh, you know, uh, the situation is is very um, unexpected. So we're gonna uh, decide if we could do this. Uh, until the end of April, and then we'll, we'll, we will announce on the, the mailing list. So um, this biohackathon is, so we have been organizing uh, since 2008, so it's, it's more than 10 years. And uh, this one is mainly focusing on the standardization and the interoperability of the biomedical data and web services. So I think this is another opportunity to keep uh, the work uh, of this COVID-19 virtual uh, biohackathon. And if, so, yeah, we, we, we cannot say anything right there, but uh, so we hope to have another one, hopefully this year, maybe, I don't know. But, uh, yeah, so we'll, we'll announce it later. 
Okay, good. That's it. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, so before moving to the acknowledgements, as I have seen that uh, there have been some announcement about um, events not fully related to COVID, well, I, I want to share with you that we will be hosting a workshop. Uh, let me use the annotation tool seen here. Sorry, Tasro, to hijack your, um, your slide. So we will be running Damaslo's Damaslo's um, yes ISWC workshop uh, on um, open science, open link science, and uh, research data and research objects um, management plans. This one will be collocated with uh, ISWC. It will be virtual. It has been already decided, but I as well you see that this year will not be we will not meet in Greece as originally planned, but it will go virtual. So I will add uh, more information to the slides and also to this page that we will create in case any of you is interested in research objects management and open link science. Okay, so I will clear this. Oh. We'll remove this, otherwise it will stay in the presentation. And now let's going to move. I think this is our last slide. Let me, yes, is the last slide. So it's the acknowledgement. Thank you everybody for participating in this. You're, um, you are the ones actually making this uh, biohackathon. Organizers are just facilitators, but uh, without you participants, this would, uh, this wouldn't be happening. So thank you everybody for joining us. A special uh, thanks uh, to Elixir Europe um, Galaxy, who has provided um, some resources and will contribute with webinars. We have heard that uh, Elixir Finland, Elixir France, and Elixir Luxembourg can provide resources as well. Um, thank you to Alex Garcia for setting up the Slack and getting a Slack uh, to give us the full license so we can even have calls with the slide and uh, we can keep all the, the history about our, um, our communication in there. Thanks to Zoom as well, who made possible uh, the webinar for today in particular because uh, we were running late in order to get uh, an account and uh, they enabled the webinar in a demo version for us for today. So we were able to do this. I don't have anything else uh, to add on my side. I think so. So I don't know, Tasro, Piotr, do you want to add anything else? Uh, nothing from my side, and uh, thank you very much, Leila. Thank you. This is, I think, this is the first ever biohackathon introduction symposium, which finished in time, just ninety minutes. That's wonderful. <laughs> thank you, Leila. Actually, it's true. I didn't realize before about it, but yes, we we were well within time. <laughs> Piotr, do you want to add uh, any final words? No, I'm just very pleased the way things are developing, and uh, let's go for it. Hack, hack, hack. Okay, I, I just will move quickly to one of the initial. Uh, yes, this one just for you to remember our tweeting, our Twitter hashtag, the question, the questions and answers on Slack and uh, the GitHub. And I think with this, uh, we can conclude our webinar. Thank you so much for participating. And yeah, let's go into hot. Uh, Lena, um, yes. uh, have we decided which date and which, what, what time we will have the, the final wrap up talk? Yes, yes. Uh, thank you for mentioning. So we will have a mid term session similar to this one presenting what has been done so far and uh, what you're struggling with and what kind of help you need from other groups on Wednesday. Same time, I will send the invitation for the webinars uh, probably tomorrow, not today, definitely not today. Uh, so that one will be Wednesday. Again, at uh, 2 p.m. Central European summer time, so 12 UTC. Uh, and we will have our wrap-up session, same time, 2 p.m. CE, 
EST 12 UTC on Saturday. Normally we have the wrap up uh, earlier on Saturday, uh, but uh, well, it's already 5 a.m. Uh, in uh, the West Coast, coast in North America. I know it is still uh, late for New Zealand. It's 1 a.m., so 2 a.m. and a half for them. But that is kind of the only slot that was kind of doable for most people that we found. So sorry about with Kiwis in New Zealand. Sorry, sorry about it. Um, but uh, those are the times. Uh, on the GitHub, we have a link to the... Um, the video conferences, meetings that we will have, all the information will always be there. So you can always go go there and find the information. But midterm for sure on Wednesday, wrap up for sure on Saturday, same, uh, same time as today. And if any group want to have like a quick update, we can create um, a webinar for you as well. Um, or if you want to have a webinar, well, just let us know. And we will keep in touch uh, mostly with coordinators to start with about the podcast that uh, Conrad Forstner from uh, OpenScience.org will be running uh, during the week. Anything else that you think I'm forgetting? I think that's a perfect writer. Okay, great. Piotr, do you want, you said just hacking, hacking, hacking? <laughs> I, th I think uh, we, we covered many things, Laila. Um, um, I, I don't know. Do you have a place where we have uh, where, we've, where we're hosting an agenda because we will have the webinars and everything? Yes, it is on the virtual repository on, on the virtual on the GitHub repository. Sorry, I think if you go there, it will be kind of the sixth point on the on the main entrance, uh, like video conferences and. Um, meetings and webinars there is an entrance and i think it's number six there is a list right before the topic list if i'm not mistaken uh so you will find that and uh, just in case of doubt i will send um, a reminder to everybody on the um, on the slack general channel okay i think that's it Thank you very much, everybody. Stay safe and start hacking. Enjoy the hacking and let's going to produce some good resources to fight this pandemic. Let's going to contribute. Thank you very much.